So now in this video, we're going to look at a circuit that I think is a lot of fun. So a long time ago, I think when I was a teenager, I learned that if you shine a light on an LED, it actually acts kind of like a mini solar cell. So it actually produces electricity. It is very little. I did a bunch of playing around in uh, old videos. Maybe I'll do an updated one where I had a whole bunch of them and I was able to uh, generate some power but nothing money wise you're just best off buying an actual solar uh, cell so in any case what we're gonna do with the uh, 741 op amp we can take that very 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 small amount of uh, voltage that it can create and it actually it's about uh, 1.5 volts I think but it can't produce hardly any power but you don't really need hardly any current I should say you don't really need hardly any current at the inputs of the pin so to begin with the circuit we are going this is an 18 volt power supply and at the non-inverting pin so pin number three going down we're not going to use this top pin the second pin down is the inverting input and then the non-inverting input is third pin down of course we have to power the integrated circuit and uh, pin 4 goes to the negative rail and pin 8 the top pin there goes to the positive rail second pin up pin 6 is our output and uh, those three pins other than the power pins are all we deal with so uh, I think this is a standard layout for single op amps I think they usually have the same layout uh, there's dual op amps though where and comparators where the pin layout is different because there are two op amps or comparators in there so in any case let's finish this up so we're gonna make a voltage divider here so this is gonna set the voltage to the non-inverting pin at 9 volts and then we're gonna use the LED as I said it will produce a little uh, a, an okay amount of voltage but very very little current but in any case when the light is hitting it the long lead the anode will actually produce a more positive voltage the shorter lead the cathode will produce a more negative voltage so we're going to put the long lead the anode to the inverting pin the cathode we're going to put to the non inverting pin so what that means is when it's producing a voltage we will give a more positive voltage to the inverting pin than the non-inverting pin. So non-inverting pin will be more negative, the output will be more negative. Inverting pin will be more positive, inverted is negative. So the output will be more negative. That's a simple way to think about it. So now, for the load, I'm going to use two LEDs as polarity indicators. And so, so that we can, you know, get an idea of what the output is doing. Just a broad idea. So, we're going to take one kilo ohm resistors because we're dealing with 18 volts, and we're going to make another voltage divider. So, one kilo ohm resistor to the positive rail, and then we're going to go down one spot from the jumper there. It's one row down. And again, we're going to take another one kilo ohm resistor. Put it to the negative rail. These two are 100 kilo ohm resistors, by the way, and then these are 1 kilo ohm resistors. So they're both down one rail. So when the output is more positive, I want the red LED to light up. Just because red positive, it's an easy way to remember that when the red LED is lit up, that's because the output's more positive. So long lead the anode to the jumper, short lead the cathode to those two resistors and then of course the LED the green LED we're gonna do the opposite we want it to light up when the output is more negative so the cathode goes to the jumper the short lead the long lead the anode goes to those resistors and so I'm gonna turn the power supply on we have 18 volts to the rail you can see that the red LED is on and it's gonna stay on. I don't. I don't think I have any hope with this lamp. Of uh, okay, this lamp. This is an interesting thing. Um, 
both LEDs could not be on at the same time. So we ran into some kind of oscillation where it's bouncing back and forth on and off. And uh, so there's something within the component where it's not locked solidly on or off at this point. It's oscillating back and forth. But in any case, this lamp, okay, this lamp is bright enough. So I can get the lamp close enough to the LED. It's acting like a little solar cell, as you can see there, to, uh, to actually change the output there. And uh, I thought I was going to have to use the headlamp. I'm glad that lamp worked. So there we go. You can see extremely bright light, of course, the brighter the uh, more the green one will be on and just for fun let's take a look at the voltages so right now the red LED is on so I'm going to put the black probe there let's see what the voltage at the output is and it is 16.67 uh, volts so about the full power supply voltage and remember we have uh, 9 volts at uh, this side of the LEDs and so now with the brighter light up to it let's see what we're at so 2.491 volts so it's below 9 volts let's see if I can hold that yeah you can hold it and I'm going to pull it back you can see the darker it gets the uh, brighter the LEDs get and you can see it's a sudden change it looks like at about that point so in any case uh, hopefully sometime in the future I'll have more official explanations of everything going on but it's fun just experimenting you get ideas with these components as I said I've done uh, a handful of videos with LEDs where I have them generate electricity and I stored them into capacitors or whatever because some of my meters maybe all my meters can't really measure the current from them but uh, uh, the op amps they need so little current practically none at their inputs that they can actually detect that we have a charge built up there so in any case thanks for watching I will see you in the next video